Jai Shri Radhe, Sabaishnamon Kujai Shri Krishna. Today is day 105. We are in the middle of uh, Vartha number 80, the story of two Kunabis from Gujarat. Continuing. Meanwhile, the boss was thinking, I should give them some better work to do. At that moment, the superintendent was handing out the wages. He addressed him. I think we should give some better work to those two guys. They are good men. Please do this for their ovation of us. But the two Kunabis took their pay and went back to their camp. They cooked and made their offerings. Then they divided the wages into two halves. After night fell, they picked up their things and left. They travelled 30 miles by the time morning came. There they cleaned their teeth and bathed and washed and walked another 40 miles. They camped when night fell and cooked, made their offerings and then partook of Mahaprasad. They slept the night there. The next morning they set off again and soon came to Jatipura, where he had the holy sight of Sri Nathji. Then they went for the night of then they went for the sight of Sri Gosaiji and bowed down to him. He asked the two of them where they had been for so long. They replied, O oh, Maharaj, one day we were in Sri Nathji's seva when the thought occurred to us that we had been serving but had never actually been able to offer him some special delight from our part. We set off and got jobs as labourers. We have finished with those jobs and now brought the money from that work to you. They put all their funds collected in front of Sri Gosaiji. They also told him all the sorts of things that they would like to offer to their lord. Sri Gosaiji gave all of their money to his storekeeper and told him to get ready all of the things that the two brothers had thought about. Then they told Shri Gosaiji that what had hap- all that had happened to them. Oh, Maharaj, we had created a good system of working, but then they recognised us to be Vaishnavas. That is why we ran away from there, and now we have come to your lotus feet. Shri Gosaiji said, well done. You kept to your principles and protected your dharma. This is the correct way for a Vaishnava. He then told them to return to the server of Srinachi in the same way as before. Be happy and serve the Lord as your beloved Sri Takuji. Bhav Prakash, the moral of this story is that a Vaishnava should keep their devotional way to themselves. They should not make it public. A Vaishnava should never earn money by showing themselves off as a Vaishnava. Doing that will never allow one's dharma to become perfect. Dharma is a very subtle affair. Thus concludes Vartha 80, the story of two Kunabi brothers who were the recipients of Sri Gusaiji's grace and accomplished Vaishnavas. There is no real end to their tale. Vartha 81 is the story of one very elevated Vaishnava from, Gu- from Gujarat, Bhav Prakash. This is a devotee of Rajasi disposition. In the eternal Leela, her name is Bhavod, Bhavod Bodhika, because she always awakens love for the beloveds in others. She manifests from Ratna and is thus a form of her divine loving sentiment. She was born as a son to a family of Brahmins in a village in Gujarat. Once Sri Gosaiji was going to Dwaraka for the holy site of Sri Ranchorlalji and made camp under a tree by the side of a lake just outside that village. He had the sight of Sri Gosaiji as more beautiful than a million cupids, he thought. This is the Lord himself, therefore I should become his disciple. He then requested Sri Gosaiji to initiate him. Sri Gosaiji recognised him to be a divine son and initiated him with the Lord's name and Brahma Samband. Then he continued on to Dwarka, part one. He was the only Vaishnava in that village. Not a single other Vaishnava lived there. That village was on the main road and one once when Sri Gosaiji was on his way to Dwarka, he came along that very road. The Vaishnava found out that Sri Gosaiji was coming that way and went along the road and stood waiting there. When Sri Gosaiji became visible, he went and placed his head on his feet and then invited him to his house. His house was very small, but Sri Gosaiji still stopped off there. Sri Gosaiji partook a prashad in his house. Then he slept. Then the Vaishnava left his let his accompanying Brajwasis do lots of lovely cooking, and he and they all took Mahaprasad there together. In the afternoon, Utap and Seva, time, time, Sri Gosaiji was sitting on his pillowed sofa and the Vaishnava was massaging his feet. Sri Gosaiji asked of him, How do you pay for your living expenses? He replied, O oh, Maharaj, you had been here once before. You had made your camp beneath one tree. That is where you initiated me. You also let me have your sight as more beautiful than a million cupids. At that time, that tree also had heard the Lord's name and also the Brahma Samban mantra and saw you to be the Supreme Lord. Then I realized that the tree was also a Vaishnava. Therefore, I always come and sit under that tree. I sing your name and praises to it and then return home. Sri Gosaiji was very happy to hear that, hear all that the Vaishnava had to say. He thought to himself, I asked this Vaishnava a question about his worldly welfare and he gave me a reply in a spiritual vein. Bhav Prakash, the moral here is that a Vaishnava should always retain a spiritual mindset. Sri Gosaiji asked the Vaishnava where that tree was. He replied that it was just outside the village. Sri Gosaiji called for his horse and he rode off to have the sight of that tree. The Vaishnava accompanied him. They went just outside the village to where the tree stood. 
The Vaishnava pointed out the tree to Sri Gosaiji from afar. The tree also saw Sri Gosaiji approaching and its top branches bent down low to bow to him. Sri Gosaiji went to stand under the tree and the tree bent its branches down to touch his feet. As it did so, it became uprooted and fell. At that moment, Sri Gosaiji accepted the tree as his disciple. The Vaishnava asked Sri Gosaiji, O Maharaj, who was this tree in his, its previous birth? Please bless me by telling me. Sri Gosaiji revealed, This tree was in the eternal leader as a cowherd who looked after Sri Nandaraji's cows and his name was Banchu. Due to some offence, he had to be born on this mortal plane and he was an initiated Vaishnava. However, he had lots of impure desires and was thus reborn as a tree. When it heard that the, the eight syllable and the Brahmasamban mantras, however, that tree became a pushti soul and now that it has accepted now that it has associated with you it has been accepted along with its tree body and has now returned to the eternal realm Bhav Prakash thus the Vaishnava again asked of Sri Gosaiji how much more time do I have to spend here Sri Gosaiji gave him some blessings and said I still have some seva for you to do here within this body but when this body is over you will go directly to the eternal realm the Vaishnava was very pleased to hear this Sri Gosaiji went back to his camp. He stayed the night there but left, left the next morning. The Vaishnava gave everything he had in his house to Sri Gosaiji who then travelled to Dwarka. Not long after, the Vaishnava, now full of divine love and suffering separation from the beloveds, left his body and attained the divine Leela. Thus concludes Vartha 81, the story of that elevated Vaishnava who was a recipient of Sri Gosaiji's grace and an accomplished Vaishnava. There is no real tale, no real end to this tale. Aaj Kian and Kijeho, Subvaishnava and Kujay Shri Krishna, JJ Shri Radhi.